I am deeply confused. And that isn't an unusual state for me, so I thought I would unpack it a little bit for you all here. But first things first, I need to tell you about Ben Fountain. The ripe age of 54, Ben Fountain released his second book called Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. This was back in 2012, and it would go on to join the likes of Paul Beatty's The Sellout and Chimamande Ngozi Adichie's Americana as a winner of the National Book Critics Circle Award. And now I'm going to enthusiastically gush about the book because, well, frankly, that's what we do here at The Poptimist. Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk is focused on a Thanksgiving weekend football game between the Dallas Cowboys and the Chicago Bears. Billy is a 19-year-old American soldier, and he, along with the rest of the Bravo squad, are making one last stop at Texas Stadium before they're redeployed back to Iraq. The boys have been hosed down, meddled up, and carted around for a two-week propaganda-heavy, media-saturated victory tour across the United States where Billy has had to meet countless grateful, misty-eyed citizens who go, frankly, a little other heads meeting him. And they push and shove and mash in close and grab at his arms and talk too loud. Their words snap and spark in Billy's ears like bugs impacting an electric bug zapper. And over and over, Billy hears words like terrorist, courage, Iraq, WMDs, acts of sacrifice, 9-11. And all of this the result of 3 minutes and 43 seconds worth of footage captured by an embedded Fox News crew that shows Bravo Squad an intense firefight with Iraqi insurgents. The video's gone completely viral, and Bravo Squad finds themselves back on American soil trying to shore up the war effort. Fountain manages to invoke the spirit of the United States at the heart of Texas post 9-11, when Bush was in his ascendancy looking for WMDs, Fox News ruled the airwaves, and folks were buying up duct tape and plastic sheeting to cover up their windows in response to persistent code orange status. There's an incredible section early on in the book when we're taken behind the scenes along with Billy and visit the Dallas Cowboys equipment room. It's the size of an airplane hangar. There is yards of space aid fabric in the Dallas Cowboy colors, floor to ceiling shelves filled with shoes in every configuration to accommodate for astroturf, grass, damp, dry, wet conditions. There are helmets that are engineering marvels made with the latest cutting edge polymers, resins, and epoxies that are capable of being modified to each individual player. There are ointments, gels, creams, antifungals, antibacterials, chemical hand warmers, uh, cold weather cream. They've got boxes and boxes of chewing gum, crates of Gatorade in every single flavor, and yet they can't spare a single Advil for Billy to tamp down his headache because, well, them are the rules. These football players are the best cared for creatures in the history of the planet. They are the beneficiaries of the finest nutrition, the latest technologies, the best medical care. They are living at the pinnacle of American innovation and abundance. These are an industrial sized humans, like an entirely different species with beer keg heads and redwood necks. Other countries would go broke trying to feed these beasts. And it's just laid there on the page, noted without comment. Nothing is said about the conditions that Billy finds himself in Iraq, the equipment he may or may not have access to, the Humvees encased in fiberglass and aluminum as opposed to being heavily armor plated. And therein lies the tone of the book. Ben Fountain shows, but doesn't tell. Whether it's the Neanderthal cast of football players or the one percenters jostling in the sky booth, Ben Fountain has rendered a literary wet dream for liberals that's quietly satirical, as if to counterbalance the froth and fury of a Coulter or O'Reilly bestseller. Fountain lays out the detail and leaves it for the reader to draw their own conclusions. Bravo Squad may be the sludgiest of street pervs, born of broken and poor families, with brothers that wish they'd die in Iraq, fathers that attack them with a monkey wrench at age 15, born of Oxycontin addicts, drug dealers, deadbeats, and meth heads. But scrubbed clean and bemetalled, they are the nation's very spine and marrow. They are American heroes. They've also got Albert Ratner in tow. He's an award-winning Hollywood producer that's trying to get the boys some money for the film rights. Now he's run into a bit of a snag. Investors don't want to get involved unless there's a star attached, and the A-listers don't want to commit unless there's investment. However, Hilary Swank has expressed interest, and that may be the trick to get the movie made. Ratner wants to turn the four minutes of footage into a powerful rescue story, one of validation and redemption, life snatched from the jaws of death, uh, heroism ennobled by tragedy. That's what prompted this video in the first place. Just last week, the first trailer dropped for the Ang Lee-directed movie slated for a November release, and it's all flags and fireworks, profiles of grim American courage in the face of uh, unbelievable odds, and it feels more like the movie that Albert Ratner is pitching, and less the book that Ben Fountain wrote. 
Maybe it's a meta bait and switch, and this is the first of many trailers that slowly reveal the satirical elements of the movie. Or maybe it's just a weird trailer that has nothing to do with the movie. That wouldn't be the first time that a movie has diverged so far from the original text. But I'm here to tell you, the trailer that dropped has nothing to do with the feel or tone of the book. And I highly recommend you check out the book, because I thought it was great. Either way, though, I hope Hilary Swank makes an appearance in this film. Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. If you've read it, tell me if I'm the only one that's feeling crazy after watching that trailer, and if it actually matches up with the book that you read. In any case, I hope you have a great reading week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.